Good morning, scholars, and welcome to Lesson 5. Um, today in Lesson 5, we will be previewing uh, Being Lost, uh, the article Being Lost, and then the second article is going to be Thunder. So if you want to pause the video to go ahead and grab those two um, articles, you can, Being Lost and Thunder. I'll give you just a moment to grab those. All right, and so our learning objective for today is close readers use the text to answer questions and then choose the best answer choice. And again, this is all, was already provided to you in your packet, so let's go ahead and jump straight in. So today you are, I'm going to give you an added challenge of not two, but four answer choices. As the text and the questions become more complicated, it is essential uh, that you use both the habits of good readers and you use the plan of attack that we've always used in the classroom, okay? So I want you guys to go ahead and take roughly about mm, eight minutes to go ahead and attack this passage. And remember, one of the things that we've been learning thus far is to make sure that you include the directions in as a text feature or make sure you just give it some type of attention, okay? So you can go ahead and pause the video as you uh, go ahead and attack uh, this article and I'll be right back with you. Okay, so by now, you all should have already done all of the leg work to your article and I will go over this with you. So we wanna first talk about the genre. Poetry, that's right. I hope that you all remember poetry because it's been a while uh, since we've actually looked at poetry. So yes, this is the genre of poetry. We know that we have fiction, nonfiction, and poetry as some of the main genres that we focus on in third grade. So the genre is poetry. And so then uh, the next thing that you all should have done is what we've done in class with poems um, before is to identify how many stanzas you actually have. And so I can see here that there's only one break in the article and there's only one stanza. All right, so right now what you should be doing is checking and confirming your work with my work, okay? There are actually 17 lines. Now, even though when you originally started the article, you saw that there are only, they, ha they only had uh, lines number 5, 10, and 15, but you should have gone in as we've done before in class with poetry, and you should have numbered your remaining lines so that if we have a question that's asking us anything about those lines, we know directly uh, where we want to go. Okay, and so I broke my passage up here. The title of the poem was Being Lost by Carla Cuskin. And um, the direction said to read the poem and then answer questions one and two. So I decided that the idea changed um, between stanza one and stanza two. And we also know from second grade and from third grade that poetry can change or the idea of poetry can change in the midst of the uh, stanza as well. So for stanza one, um, which I, I said that there were two up here, but I didn't label. So this is stanza one and stanza two. So for stanza one, uh, my, my jot was lost. Uh, it's a perfect way to pass time. Now you don't have to have exactly what I have, but that it should be something similar to the main idea coming out of that stanza. All right. And so then for the second stanza, which is lines five through 17, I basically put lost equals in a book. I mean, we all know that we can get lost and caught up in books because reading is a great thing. And if we play our mind movies and turn our mind movies on as we're reading, we'll get lost in a book very fast, especially a good book, right? So then I came on down and we're going to talk about the big idea. Now, again, your big idea does not have to be exactly what I have, but your big idea should be something similar to what I have. OK, so for the big idea, uh, for the big idea, I have being lost is the best way to pass time. Even when others call being lost in a book, I'm sorry, even when others call being lost in a book is the even when others call. I'm, I'm missing my comma there. Even when others call, being lost in the book is the best place to ball. Okay? So what I did was I took my jot from stanza one and my jot from stanza two, and I meshed my jots together, and I came up with my big idea. All right? And so if you need to make any corrections to that, I'll allow you the time to go ahead and pause the video um, so that you can make any corrections to your jot or your big idea. 
Okay, so now what we're going to do is we are going to jump into uh, the questions for being lost. And again, remember I told you today that you would have, instead of having two questions for being lost, you're actually going to have four questions um, for being lost, okay? So what we are going to do first off is we're going to cover up our uh, answer choices and we are going to read the questions the way that Ms. Jordan has taught us to do. Nothing has changed because we're not in that classroom. We still learn the same way. So we are going to learn uh, the way that we previously learned and it says, where does the speaker get lost? Where does the speaker get lost? The speaker gets lost. And then I'm just going to simply go back because some of the times our answers are in our jobs. And I have it right here in my job. The speaker get lost in a book. I've already made those connections. And so I'm just going to go over and finish my sentence there. The speaker gets lost in a book. So now I'm going to unveil my answer choices. All right, the speaker gets lost in a hallway. I'm sorry, outside. That is not what I wrote to complete my sentence when I used my sentence stem initially. The speaker got lost in a book. That does not mean. And besides, that's not text evidence. The speaker got lost in the hall. That's not text evidence. The speaker got lost in a book. I can match my answer to see that. The speaker got lost on the stairway. Uh, they did mention, and you know that these questions try to trick you, they did mention the stairway in here spiraling up the stairway, hovering in the hall, but that wasn't the main location that the speaker got lost. So I'm going to X that out, and then D says uh, the speaker got lost in a book without a shadow of a doubt. D is my answer. It matches what I wrote, and it also is where I got my text evidence from, and I know that Ms. Jordan is always looking for text evidence, so I'm going to write line 17 because that's where it came from, down here in line 17 in a book, lost in a book, okay? So let's go on to question number two. Question number two says, what is the main idea of this poem? What is the main idea of this poem? I know from being in class that main idea could also mean, correct, big idea, which could also mean, correct, central idea. I know um, that I can see this stated in any, any kind of way. Main idea, big idea, central idea. I understand that they all mean the same thing. All right, so now what is the main idea or the big idea or the central idea? All right, so let's just go back to what we wrote. Um, I wrote for the big idea is that being lost is the best way to pass time. Even when others call, being lost in a book is the best place of all, best place of all. So what I'm going to come over here and I'm going to jot the big idea was basically being lost in a book. That's basically the main idea of the people can call your name. It's just like watching TV or watching your favorite movie or all these YouTube videos that I'm sure you guys are watching right now. And when mom and dad is calling your name and you're so caught up and lost in those videos that you can't even hear them. It's the exact same way. So, hey, sometimes you can really get lost in these things in today's time. Right? So now let's unveil our answer choice and let's make sure that we play the matching game. Okay? So the main idea or the big idea or central idea is that it is fun to go out and get lost. Mm, being lost in a book is the big idea. And I needed to state that. So it does talk about it's fun to go out and get lost, but we're looking for being lost in a book. So I can put a question mark beside that just because it, it is kind of throwing me there and it has getting lost in it. So let's go on to our other answer choices. It's okay to put question mark besides things that you think could be it and then go back and rethink your thought. So the main idea of the, of the poetry is being lost can be very frightening. Now that is not text evidence. As a matter of fact, they didn't mention anywhere in this story about anyone being frightened about anything. So then we know that that is totally not text evidence. Okay. So then let's go to C. Uh, the main idea is getting lost in a book is enjoyable. Well, wait a minute. Ding, ding, ding. I wrote for my text evidence being lost in a book. And they said getting lost in a book is enjoyable. So I am going to put a question mark there. Now let's take a look at D. D, it is in, the main idea is that it is, it is important to entertain yourself. Listen, I did not write anything about entertaining myself in either one of my jots nor my big idea. So that is not text evidence. So I am not going with that. So I'm going to X that out. Now I do have two question marks left. So let's go back and reread which one matches 
what I wrote the best about being lost in a book. It is fun to go out and get lost or getting lost in a book is enjoyable. C, that is correct. Getting lost in a book is enjoyable. So then I know without a shadow of a doubt, C is my answer choice. All right, pause the video if you need to catch up on anything that we just went over. Okay, so moving right along, our next story is going to be Thunder. Our next story is going to be Thunder. So I want you to go ahead and pause the video. Um, I am going to give you about eight minutes. So go ahead and set your timers for eight minutes. And then we are going to come back uh, when we get ready to go over Thunder. We are going to come back and the question numbers that we'll be looking at is two, four, um, five, and six. But don't worry about this. We'll come back to this at a later time. But I just wanted to preview you on the questions that we will be looking at. But for right now, I want you to go ahead and pause the video and let's attack this passage. Welcome back. So right now, your paper should look just like my paper here. Okay. Your paper should look just like my paper here. All right. So I know based on the genre of the previous article uh, that again, this is poetry. Um, so the title of it is Thunder. I boxed in my directions because remember we are now identifying directions as, as a text feature. It is something that we are going to draw our attention to and um, take a look at. I also noted that I have 16 lines and four stanzas. So let's go through and number our stanzas. One, two, three, and four. Okay. And then as you notice, they gave us line 5, 10, and 15. But I know from what Ms. Jordan just taught me, and the same thing that she taught us in second grade and third grade, is that when they don't give you all of the numbers in poetry, <coughs> excuse me, you just go back and add the additional lines yourself. Okay? Now, I also boxed in my picture down here. Because when I look at my picture, the first thing that I thought about, sometimes I, I'm almost ready to add my own caption to it. But I see the lightning in the window. I see a dog here that's undercover. It looks like he's roughly in the living room. And I'm connecting with that because I have a light similar to this in my living room. Um, I see the mirror on the picture I, on the wall and I see the castle. I'm making a connection. This dog is looking at thunder through the window. So dog watching thunder and lightning, lightning through window and so i am just going to write that for myself as a caption um just something i can have to just make connections as i'm reading as i've read this story all right and so i just basically as we would have done in class i broke up my poetry um according to each stanza and so i'm going to go through these and then what you can do is just check your jots and your jots should be something similar to mine. They don't have to be exactly what I've written, but they should be something similar, okay? So for stanza one, my jot was thunder wakes the dog up. For stanza two, I said thunder equals should the dog hide. You know, the dog is questioning himself or herself. Should I hide? Stanza three, thunder equals is getting closer and so it's, it, it's, it fills him with fear. So I said closer uh, slash fills him with fear. That's how that should be. Closer slash fills him with fear. Okay. And then for stanza four, thunder equals loud and the dog runs to his master. But remember again, we are jotting here so it doesn't have to be complete sentences in your jots. They're just quick thoughts to remind you um, of what you just read in the article because remember we, we're doing college work and when you're in college work and you're reading those thick articles and you're having to go back and reference things we're making quick jots so that we can quickly remind ourselves about what we read okay and so then for the big idea again yours doesn't have to yours does not have to be exactly this but it should be something similar a dog was very afraid of thunder of the thunder didn't know what to do so he ran to the lap of his master okay so he ran to the lap of his master. Okay, so he ran to the lap of his master. So then now what we're going to do is we're going to move right into our questions. And again, if you need to pause, 
you can pause um, in order to finish writing the remainder of that information. 